Hi, welcome to this tutorial in my series on inverse trig functions. And in this particular video, what we're going to look at is the inverse of y equals sine x. And to do this, what I've done is I've sketched the graph of y equals sine x between minus pi and pi. That's our domain. And uh, that's measured in radians. If it was in degrees, it would be minus 180 degrees to 180 degrees. And the range for sine x is between minus 1 and 1. It's a graph that we should be familiar with anyway. Now if we're trying to find the inverse of sine x, the notation we tend to use is this, y equals arc sine x, or you might be familiar with y equals sine with a little minus 1 up here, x, the inverse sine of x, as we often say. So what does this graph look like? Well, we should be familiar as well with the fact that if you've got some relationship y equals f of x, if you want to get the inverse of this relationship, then all you need to do is reflect the graph of y equals f of x in the line y equals x. So for something like this, it's going to look like this, okay? y equals f to the minus 1 here of x, the inverse of f of x. So all we need to do then is to reflect y equals sine x in the line y equals x. And what do we get? Well, we get this graph. And if we were to mark on the values on the axes, we would see that we would get these values. You can see that this point pi here gets reflected to pi over here. And the same with minus pi here gets reflected down to minus pi here. So the range for y equals the inverse sine of x goes from minus pi to pi here. And as for the domain, we had that for the range of y equals sine x, it went from minus 1 to 1. But that now becomes the domain for y equals the inverse sine of x, or arc sine x, going from minus 1 to 1. Because 1 reflected over to here to 1, and minus 1 here reflected to the minus 1 here. Now this is all very well. We've got the respective graphs of y equals sine x and arc sine x. But I'm concerned with functions. And we should know that for a, some relationship to be a function, that there must be, for every value in the domain, just one value in the range. And this is true for y equals sine x. It is a function because you can see that if I took a particular value in the domain, like this one here, you can see that as I go up here, I get just one value for y over here in the range. It's what we call a many to one function because I could take, for instance, this value of x, go up here, and it would still be the same y value. Many values along here go to one value here. But when it comes to y equals arc sine x, this isn't a function at the moment because can you see that if I take, say, this value of x in the domain from minus 1 to 1, that I can have this value of y in the range, or I could have this value of y in the range. So we're going from one value to many values. And for something to be a function, I must have just one unique value in the range for any value of x in the domain. So how are we going to get around this problem? Easy. All we've got to do is look at part of the graph of y equals sine x, part of this function. And if I look at this particular part, then this is still a one-to-one -one graph here, so it is a function still. But when we reflect this part of y equals sine x in y equals x, then what we get is this part of y equals arc sine x. And this is now a function. 
because you can see hopefully that if I take a value in the domain going from minus 1 to 1 any value I just get one value in the range I cannot go beyond this pi upon 2 so as long as I restrict the domain from minus 1 to 1 I've got a function for y equals arc sine x and the corresponding range would be from minus pi upon 2 to pi upon 2 and because we get this one unique value it's called the principal value it's the one that you would get if you were to do the inverse sign of a particular value on your calculator the calculator has to decide what value to give you and it always selects a value in this range so if I clear all the other clutter away now what we've got is y equals arc sine x or the inverse sine of x and we've got a domain then that goes between minus 1 and 1 for x and it can include those values and then we have our principal value which is y that is for any value of x in this domain we just get a particular value of y somewhere between minus pi upon 2 and pi upon 2 that's our range okay now it's important then that you understand about this principal value of y for what range it can lie in because when we do some questions based on inverse trig equations later on you'll find that we need to be aware of where y lies okay so try and familiarize yourself with this particular graph and why it is restricted just to this part of the curve okay well that brings us now anyway to the end of this video and I hope uh, that you found it of some value and what I'll be doing in the next few videos is we'll look at the inverse cos of x and the inverse tan of x